obviously this is not my 1025R. This is a 1023E. The 1025R had another flat. Now you can see you can kind of manhandle these smaller attachments, which is nice. It's a 48 inch dirt dog land plane. Do a little grind, uh, do a little grading work. See how this does. You're going to notice there's no shanks, no scarifiers, or rippers, whatever you want to call them, up front. So I had asked Dirt Dog, but the reason was why there's no shanks up here. And uh, essentially, they said that for these smaller tractors, anything that's going to use a land plane like this, or really even a box blade, you know, that extra power that's required when those shanks are down. You just can't really do it with a tractor this size. So they just try to keep the cost down. Um, and, and I haven't used the shanks at all. I don't think so. Have I used the shanks on my bigger land planes? Yeah. I, I can't think of a time I've used the shanks on my bigger land planes. These land planes are mainly made for driveway grading. So, you know, maybe the first time, or if you don't do it for a very long period of time when you have a lot of potholes, you need to do like a, a deep rip and grade. Perhaps that's the situation. But besides that, I think it's going to be A-OK -okay, uh, with just the two blades itself with no shanks in here. Keeps the cost down, keeps a little bit lighter weight, more manageable for these smaller tractors. But we're going to give it a shot today see how it does. Welcome back to Good Works Tractors. Today we're going to do a little late winter grading of the driveway here. We've got about 2,000 foot of lane that we installed last summer, early fall, I guess, sometime around there. So one of the things with a gravel driveway is you do have to do periodic maintenance with it. And I love it. I enjoy it a lot. It looks so good when it's done. And the amount of maintenance is probably depending on usage and some other factors as well. You know, I think I fully graded twice last year, last fall. So it's been several months since we last did it and it's been the course of winter. So there's been some heaving, some thawing going on. We do have to bring in more material this year, but I wanted to get a good base down last year. That's what we're working with. We have to add additional, our, our finished material on top of this, which we'll knock out later this summer. Now we put this driveway in from scratch. This was an overgrown field, uh, a lot of autumn olive, other bushes growing up. So first we had to clear all those out. Then we had to get the topsoil removed as well. So what we did is we tilled everything all along this 2000 foot, scraped it out. You're going to see random topsoil piles all along that I still have to do something with. And then we started putting down all of our gravel and that's what you see now. Everything that's been spread out, we have not compacted yet. So we've been letting mother nature do its thing along with all the, the traffic that we've driven across it. But we've primarily been using larger equipment. So this is a look to see how a smaller piece of equipment, a smaller setup in general can do handling a big driveway like this. So our driveway is roughly 12 to 14 foot wide. It gets wider in a couple areas around some turns and, and whatnot, but you can see the blades are angled on the land plane all right and so as you're scraping along that material is going to slide from one side to the other and we're trying to keep a crown in our driveway so that the water kind of rolls off to both sides doesn't pool in the middle and there's a few areas we still have to work on so i'm going to keep that in the back of my mind as i am doing this work here to try to pull that material more towards the middle of the driveway versus pushing it off so a few important features about this blade number one you are going to have bolted on skid runners down here so they're replaceable so if you end up wearing out those skid runners you can put on new ones um, there's certain equipment that i can get from other manufacturers that doesn't have those replaceable wear surfaces which i typically refuse to get because i think it's just doing a disservice to your customers so that's a nice feature to have on there both of the cutting edges on here are also going to be bolted on so they are reversible meaning you can flip them over and use the other side and they're also going to be replaceable and you are going to be category one quick hitch compatible uh, this tractor didn't have a quick hitch on here so we didn't put one on and then hook this up we just hooked it up direct but it is category one three-point compatible or quick hitch compatible an important consideration is that this is also made in america down in georgia and the one last thing i want to point out that the smallest size just to reiterate does not have shanks on it there's scarifiers or shanks or rippers whatever you want to call them that you might see that are normally in a stored position on most equipment they're not on here, okay? So all the bigger sizes of these land planes do have those um, additional teeth on them as well, just not the 48 inch. 
As always, we are proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. If you are looking for a stability solution for your tractor, feeling a little tippy side to side, wheel spacers make a big difference. I get a lot of customer feedback on it all the time about how big of a difference they were surprised at the improvement and stability that it offered for their tractors. So if you want more information or to buy, you go directly to Bora, hit the link down below. Hey, I wanna thank you for taking the time to stop by. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd love to have you follow along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. And if you are in the market for a tractor attachment, something for the three-point hitch for the front end loader, we can help you out. We sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country every day of the week. Our inventory is constantly expanding, so check out what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com.
so we did two passes down and back for a total of I think it was like 21 or 22 minutes so not too bad for 2,000 feet you know it's never a perfect time to do it and it's a little too wet in areas to um, to do a good job out here right now but for the most part it's flattening it out it's kind of dispersing it getting rid of some of those ruts we don't treat our driveway out here like a normal driveway we do a lot of driving across and turning on it for different um, uh, loading different equipment up and things like that too so it takes a pretty good beating but I can already see some of these areas that are already starting to dry out a little bit better after they've been kind of just spread out and overturned and it's brought some gravel some stone back up to the surface there were a couple really soupy spots that it was slipping and spinning quite a bit. I don't know if you can pick that up in the video at all or not. Um, so 48 inches is really as big as you wanna go. I think 60 inch is too big for a subcompact. This is a 23 horsepower uh, version of the, the subcompact series in John Deere. One of the big things I forgot I hate about the 1023E, and this unfortunately goes for the Kubota BX as well, is that there is no position control on your three point hitch. And if you don't know what that is, it's a well, if you use it and then you don't use it, you really realize the difference. But with a position control three-point hitch, I can move this lever down bit by bit, and it stays wherever I move it to. With this version, I'm not sure what this version of three-point hitch control is called, but if I move it down, watch when I let go here, it pops it back right to the middle. So it's hard to get a fine-tuned control over raising and lowering just a little bit, especially at the end of my runs when I want to just kind of feather out that material. It's tough to get control over that. It's tough to return something to the same position, whether you're going up or down with it. It's a simplistic system, uh, must be a cheaper system is my guess as well, but something that the 1025R has that I am now realizing how much I appreciate. So we've got some more work to do down near the front entrance where it really widens up. I'll probably give this another pass maybe on here just to really kind of feather it out and let it dry out as much as possible. But again, I think that this is probably the best tool overall for maintaining a driveway. We've highlighted some other equipment on here and we'll do more videos as well featuring other tools like a rear blade, a box blade, uh, maybe a pulverizer even, all sorts of different things that you can use that perhaps could be more versatile if you have other applications for it or if you're application specific you may want to check out something like this land plane here again we carry the dirt dog line they are made in america 48 60 72 84 96 inch get all the information you need on our website we sell and ship all over the country happy to help visit goodworkstractors.com so that's about it watch us finish off the rest of this driveway if you want to hit that subscribe button right down below if you want to see more tractor videos i want to thank you for taking time out of your day and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon